So now to officially start the UCD careers event for the College of Engineering and Architecture, I would like to extend an extremely warm welcome to you all and to thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us this evening. My name is Katie O'Neill and I'm the Marketing Manager for the College of Engineering and Architecture here at UCD Dublin, Ireland. So today I'm really excited uh, by the speakers that we have joining us. We have Leona Barry, who is our Career and Skills Consultant consultant for the UC College of Engineering and Architecture. We have Eileen Lockman and Fanula McGowan, our internship managers, and two of our wonderful alumni are joining us as well, Dupala Banjari and Victor Dutta. Ah, hi, Victor, especially welcome, because it's very early where Victor is coming in over in California. So to start, I'm just gonna play a very short video, and then we are gonna move on to our first speaker, Leona Barry. just gave you a little bit of a flavor of some of the top points around choosing to study engineering with us here at UCD. So without further delay, I'm going to hand you over to Leona Barry, who is the Careers and Skills Consultant from UCD Careers Network. Thank you very much, Katie. Sorry, Mike wasn't working there just for a moment. Um, thanks very much, Katie, for having me today. And um, you're all very welcome today. Um, my name is Leona Barry, as Katie mentioned, and I'm the UCD Career and Skills Consultant for the College of Engineering and Architecture. Um, so very much today, we'll just look briefly at the labour market, um, the career support um, that are, is on offer to students once they're in UCD, and also the opportunities students have to engage with companies while they're at UCD. So looking at the Irish labour market um, very briefly, um, so Ireland has very much a kind of a strong pharma biopharma cluster, including Johnson & Johnson, um, Shire, Amgen, and there's huge demand. And so the many have European headquarters, um, headquarters based here in Ireland. Um, 13 of the top 15 medtech companies have operations in Ireland, namely Abbott, uh, Medtronic and Stryker. Um, who build hip replacements um, for the global um, market. And Ireland is also home for 20 of the world's top 25 financial services companies, namely Citi, Bank of America and JP Morgan, who we've a number of relationships with. I'm sure you know we Dublin has a strong technology club, a hub rather, including uh, companies such as Google, uh, eBay, Nokia, um, IBM, TikTok. Um, Intel have been here for 30 to 40 years in Kildare, have about 5,000 uh, employees in Ireland. Um, and they're recently mentioned they're looking for 1,600 new uh, employees, uh, I suppose, um, 
as part of their global expansion. At TikTok, uh, mentioned in December 2020, they're looking to expand uh, by 5,000 employees in Ireland as well. Um, and just, uh, I suppose, a, a little, I suppose, fun fact is that I suppose um, there's 1,000 cups of coffee, uh, 1 million cups of coffee shared and um, drank in uh, Intel over the course of a year. So it's a big plant there also. Um, so there's an awful lot of technology happening in Ireland and very much we're looking to the sectors of financial sector, technology sector and engineering sector. Um, financial sector, I suppose the skills that are required are very much risk, compliance, data analytics, uh, related degrees are engineering, maths, uh, data analytics, business and law. Uh, technology sector, again, software, cloud, security, um, networking and infrastructure. Um, again, looking for coming background from uh, engineering, e-business and computer science. Uh, and in the engineering sector, um, the skills required very much are process engineers, QC engineers, design project engineers, also coming from civil, electronic, biomed as well in engineering, <clears throat> excuse me. Salary surveys, um, you're very welcome to look at CPL salary guide and also Morgan McKinley salary guide, um, looking to see what salaries uh, are the general uh, uh, master's uh, graduate salary. So very much from about 27 to early 30s generally. Um, so just focusing quickly on competing in the Irish labour market, uh, it is important to understand the challenges. Um, so do your research, start making a strategy as early on and use the resources available to you. The recruitment industry is quite competitive um, and you very much drive the competitive the recruitment process. You're not actually placed from our university. Now the timelines start quite early. So in September, we have our recruitment fairs. Um, so we have four in Belfield and we also have two in Smurfa Business School. And we had, they were actually on virtual uh, uh, recruitment fairs this year on graduate land. And we welcomed 226 employers. We had 48 live presentations on the day and it was a great opportunity for students to speak with um with employers face face to face virtually anyway and book appointments with them uh, prior um so very much those early timelines are important so it's looking to get that cv and cover letter and application ready quite early but support is available um i'd advise to have a quick look at grad ireland prospects at ac.uk top 1000.ie and linkedin and uh, here you can look at career sectors, different job profiles, top employers, and perhaps maybe look and see who is actually in the field um, that you're interested in. LinkedIn is a great opportunity. So developing uh, and having a, a professional profile on online and, and networking uh, professionally as well. And looking to see where graduates from your master's have actually gone to and looking at their career um, pathway that they have taken. So here uh, again is a lovely picture and um, you saw a beautiful video uh, of, of UCD at the start from Katie. So this is the lake opposite where the UCD Careers Network is. Uh, we have two lovely swans that greet us there every morning also. Um, so we're actually located just to the right of that lake in UCD. Um, something that I would advise and it would be very helpful for you at this stage is looking at Jumpstart. It's a free online resource and it will provide you the opportunity to learn about graduate recruitment in Ireland, helping you to develop your skills uh, for the Irish employers and also looking at applying for jobs. So it's it's available to you now. Um, it's on ucd.ie forward slash careers, forward slash students, forward slash online resources. So that's Jumpstart. And I believe that would be quite helpful for you and available to do. Now, the UCD Careers Network, we support in many ways. As mentioned, we have um, our recruitment internship fairs um, in Belfield and Smurf, Michael Smurf Graduate Business School. We also have academic internships in some programs who, where um, Eileen and Fanula will discuss in a moment. We have optional career development credit bearing modules, um, such as uh, preparing for your future career, so developing your skills. And we are also um, offer a Skills for Working Life Award, which um, employers come in. Uh, it's with, within eight sessions and they offer a workshop on developing um, skills such as leadership skills, problem solving skills and also digital footprint. So it's not very much a hard sell from the company, it's helping the student develop their skills. 
We also have employer presentations and talks, um, which are currently online um, through Zoom or Teams. Um, we also offer development, uh, career development workshops on CV and cover letters, interview skills, um, virtual interview skills and career planning. Uh, we recently ran a three day engineering uh, workshop where we introduced, we had two workshops followed by two panels um, in speakers from um, Arup and PM Group and Airgrid. And on the third day, we had a CV clinic. So that's an example of one of the workshops that um, are a, a bespoke um, workshop for engineering students. You're also welcome to book into one-to-one -one career guidance and advice meetings, um, discussing your CV and cover letter, personal statement. Um, you're welcome to book an interview, mock, a mock interview, and also look at um, amending your LinkedIn profile. Um, so they can be booked uh, the day before through Careers Connect, which is leading on to our next point there, the jobs portal. So it's a vacancy portal, but it's also an opportunity. It's where you book for your uh, employer events and also to meet with a careers and skills consultant. So the job portal has um, information on all graduate jobs there and internships as well. Uh, and there are a number of psychometric tests as well. So extensive online resources there too. So just coming up to the end now, so very much looking at, we often um, advise maybe students, students to join student societies, as you probably know yourselves, that joining these student societies helps develop relationships and friendships. Um, and we have a number of student societies um, in UCD. I'm going to uh, end with a lovely picture of uh, Leo Radkar, who was our, uh, he used to be our Prime Minister, we, we called him on Taoiseach, uh, he's now on Tanishta, and uh, he is Vice Prime Minister um, now currently, and there is a lovely picture of him celebrating um, 10 years of the Ireland India Business Association IIBA, so to very much get involved in all of those associations as well will be very helpful to you. Um, so I just want to end on some um, websites there. And um, if you have any questions, I'm just going to hand you over to Katie. And I hope, Katie, I didn't go over time there, but I'm, I, I may have, so apologies. Um, so thank Not you very much. Not at all, Andy, and I thank you so much because I think it's a lot of information to try and convey in a condensed time. But I think what really comes across for me is that there are endless opportunities for our students coming into us in 2021, even at this stage through the jumpstart, to engage and it's never too early to start thinking about planning your career even before you've completed your studies with us and um, I'm sure we're going to have loads of questions but I'm going to hand over to one of our internship managers our college is very lucky we actually have two internship managers looking after the College of Engineering and Architecture and um, so without further delay I would like to introduce Eileen Lachlan. Thanks a million, um, Katie. I just have to get the slideshow up. Um, thanks a million, Katie. Um, I am one of two internship managers for the College of Engineering and Architecture. I work with Fanula McGowan, who's also on this call. Um, we help manage internships for ME students, so students on the two year ME program do an internship as part of their program. The majority of students do their internship from January to August for um, a minimum of six months, with the exception being engineering with business who do their internship from June until December. The recruitment for all of these um, cohorts start in September and um, all students uh, go through the same process at the same time. So the timelines there um, are, we advertise internships online to students throughout September. They're asked to um, upload a CV and cover letter. Um, they have by three weeks approximately to upload their applications. Then we send them off to employers. Employers shortlist and then interview students and then make an offer of internship to students. And um, once the student has been offered an internship, we then organise the paperwork, which is the internship agreement, and that's signed online by UCD, the student and the employer. Um, the internship starts then for majority of students in January, except um, engineering with business who start in June. 
So we help students a lot um, throughout the first trimester to uh, prepare for their internship. They, we run a, a, a series of seminars in conjunction with the Careers Network, um, including CV and cover letter preparation seminar, a work skills, a, an interview skills workshop. Um, the college also holds mock interviews um, in conjunction with the Engineering Graduates Association. Um, that generally happens in October or towards the end of September, October. Um, before students start their internship, they attend a seminar um, on making the most of your internship and also uh, health and safety seminars. Throughout the trimester, employer talks are held. And as Leona mentioned, also the careers uh, fairs are held this year, they were online. We also provide one-on-one -on -one coaching to those students who might need it. So the assessment for the internship. The internship is worth uh, 30 credits or 10 credits for a shorter internship or 20 credits for the engineering with business internship. An academic supervisor is assigned to students while on placement and um, they organize a site vis visit just to talk to the student and to the work supervisor just to make sure that everything is going to plan. And um, students are also required to keep a diary of their experience and then uh, submit a final report and presentation at the end of it. This is based on the diary that they've kept throughout their, um, throughout their work experience. The employer then completes one page uh, student assessment form at the end of the internship. So there are huge benefits to the student and um, they get relevant work experience uh, because it's a long internship the, it provides scope for benefit to both the student and employer. The majority of internships are paid and um, this comes in at around 19,000 to 26,000 per annum pro rata and um, it varies amongst employers. There is potential collaboration there between the student and the employer in terms of either a master's project or um, some students then go on to get graduate employment with that employer. These students also have an advantage over other students when we're entering the workplace. So there's just a list of employers there that students have gone to in the past, including Medtronic, Narup, Intel, ESB, um, but they're, they're, the list goes on and on. So that is all from me, a very quick synopsis of the internships. Thank you very much, Eileen. Um, I think that's really interesting. Just to reiterate to the attendees today, so the internships are available for the ME programmes, which is the two-year master's. Um, they're not part of the MNGSC, the one years, by virtue of the fact that uh, as you're only here for a one year master's, there isn't the time out to take for a six to eight month internship. Um, I might just ask you to stop sharing your screen. I think you may still be sharing, oh, if you don't sorry. mind. Yes, sorry. No problem at all. So I'm really excited that we were joined here by two of our students today. And the first student I'm going to introduce to you, um, I believe she studied for two years. She did the biomedical engineering degree before working in Intel and then before joining Excelsis Technologies and I believe uh, you're based in County Cork now so that is one of our uh, alumni Upala Banjuri I'd like to hand over to you now to share your experiences. Uh, thanks Katie. Um, so just to start with I knew very little when I came to Ireland I had a million questions in my mind. Um, one of the most important, I actually knew very little. So I even started learning Irish before moving to Ireland and then realized it's, I, I couldn't do it without a teacher. So, and then as soon as I landed in Ireland, everyone was speaking English. That's one of my major concerns. What if there's a language barrier? And it wasn't, everyone speaks English. In fact, Irish is the most uncommon thing here. Uh, I joined UCD in 2014 and graduated in 2016 because it was an ME a biomedical program. I did my internship in a company called Nitro. Um, it was a great experience, especially because I was moving for my bachelor's in electronics and electrical. 
to uh, ME Biomedical. Um, I always wanted to work in medical devices, but I never really knew how the industry works or what they expect from you. Um, so when I did my internship, I realized, actually, I changed my mind after doing my internship, which was great because I got the opportunity to decide what I actually wanted out of my career. Uh, when I did my biomedical internship in NIPRO as a design engineer, I realized, okay, it's more mechan mechanical inclined than electronics inclined. So that drove me towards uh, searching for companies after I graduated, which was more electronics oriented or like semiconductor in the industry if I wanted to. Um, but I always got scared. What if I don't get into those companies because my master's is biomedical and not electronics? Uh, the best thing about Ireland is they're very acceptant about this, uh, regardless what, what your master's is in. They're not going to focus on that. If you really are, you, you have skills for electronics, regardless what your master's are, they're going to hire you because that's how I got hired into Intel as a design engineer. Um, the great, one of my major motivation towards going into Intel was the employer presentation, as mentioned earlier. After seeing the presentation, I was like, oh, wow, this is where I want to go. And when I spoke to the, uh, the people who had come from Intel and I told them, okay, I have my master's in biomedical, is that a problem? They said, no, it's not a problem. If you really want to move after your master's into a different industry, it's completely acceptable. Uh, if you are scared about how the faculty is, they're great, they're very friendly. Um, if you have any problem, you can directly go and approach them and they will help you out. If you want to do some research after and not get a job, that's also possible. People have found uh, various PhD opportunities and then moved on to postdoc that I have seen. Um, for me, I worked two and a half years in Intel and then moved to Cork because uh, with a different company and now I work with Power Electronics. So you can see that you can move around in different companies. If you have the skills, they will hire you. They, they have no problem. They don't look at your which degree of masters you have. You have a masters, that's all matters in the industry in Ireland. Um, the career, um, if, if, if you get a lot of help with your resume, I, I use the help myself. Um, the mock interviews are great because they actually tell you how to, uh, how they expect you to act in during interviews, and it it gives you an ex it gives you a pre experience before you actually go to an interview. I gave around three internship interviews, uh, but I chose to go to Nitro because uh, that's it. It mostly aligned with the kind of work I wanted to do. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I. I, that's, it is a great experience to choose UCD. And I think every one of you are making a great decision. It has been the best thing I have chosen in my life. And um, the campus is amazing. It's huge. I think even after two years, I've not seen every, every inch of the campus. So, and the libraries are great. I, I can totally vouch for saying, you're making the right decision to moving to UCD. Thank you. Paula, thank you so much for, for sharing your experience. Um, and it's great to hear how well you're doing in your career. And no doubt that's also down to your dedication and your hard work as well. So, so well done to you. Um, I'm also delighted that we have another um, alumni with us, uh, Victor Dutta, who studied the ME in Energy Systems. Now, uh, Victor is not based in Cork or based in Dublin. He is over in California. So thanks again for getting up at about 6 a.m. I'm sure you haven't even had your first breath, bit of breakfast or coffee yet. Um, but I think you're working in MPS in California now. Um, and previous to that, you had worked in Maxim, I think, for about two years. But you might just take the time to share your experience with our, our viewers today. Yeah, sure, sure. Thanks. Thanks, KP, Lauren, Leona. A uh, couple of slides. It just refresh my all memory. So that's first First of all. So first I'll start. Uh, I joined UCD on 2013. Uh, I did my master's in energy systems, but I convert my course in a two years program. And that is a great flexibility I, I received from the UCD. 
Uh, I did my uh, internship from IBM Research Lab, um, and that is a six month internship. And the way uh, Leona explained, uh, the process was really very helpful. So that, that gave me the confidence and that helped me to apply for the different companies as well. And after finishing my uh, uh, internship, I completed my rest of the course. And then after I was placed in a two uh, major companies like ESB and Maxim Integrated, but I want to select the low voltage power. So that's the reason I choose Maxim. I was based on Dublin for one year. And after that, I shift to California uh, because of the work work related purpose in the same company internal transfer. But what I just want to share uh, based on my experience in UCD, uh, as Upala said that, yeah, they, whenever you are applying, you are coming from India to for your higher studies in Ireland, you may have a lot of questions and that's that's very normal. But the best things about UCD, what I really um, praise is the flexibility of the course selection. The one thing uh, which make me very confident for my work, work profile is that I choose energy system, but at the same time during my two years program, I select the courses from the computer science engineering where I have interest to learn the data science. I select a couple of courses on the electronics domain where I need to learn the semiconductor device. So that, that gave me a lot of, lot of flexibility. Actually, I completely draw my path. I select courses from the different branches. And what I really want to do, I did that. That flexibility in many universities not provide. So that is the first thing I want to tell. The second thing is that, that the best facility of lab, the, the way the UCD, the courses for the ME engineering they uh, covered, they have the lab and they have the class, uh, the lectures uh, notes. So you're going to talk with the professor at the same time in the afternoon session, you're going to spend time with the lab. So that is very, very important because the without lab experience, you will not be feel comfortable when you are part of the company. The third things which really helpful coming from uh, India or different different part of the world, when you part of the UCD, you will be first, you feel like that, okay, I'm nervous. I don't know what to do. And that is the job of the career de uh, development team they continuously going to monitor you. You can set up a one-on-one -on -one call. And I did that. I literally did that. I completely uh, built my CV. I gave the mock interview. And then after there is a career event where a lot of companies are in the campus. And right now it is, I think, the way uh, uh, Katie mentioned, it's a digital domain. But that's going to give you to a uh, platform to talk with the different companies. And you can select that, okay, what, which field do you want to go? The... Last things, uh, the couple of two things I want to mention. Uh, when you're the part of the company, at one of one point of time, people people ask me. Means I, I got a lot of questions on the LinkedIn. Couple of people's contact with me Facebook. But one thing I want to share: share. Don't think about the companies right now. Just focus on your study. And to be very frank and to be very honest, I got two three offers. I was placed in the ESB. I was placed in the Maxim. So the main key things is that UCD provide. The career department is going to help you to build your resume, to give you the confidence to prepare for the interview, your own course structure, uh, the talk with the professors, your uh, subjects, that's going to give you the confidence on the subject uh, matter. And the last thing is that you're going to talk with a lot of different companies. So you're going to get a platform where you can talk, we can, you, you can select which field you want to go. And lastly, the Ireland is the best. I travel around the Europe. I, I was three months uh, in Denmark. Then after I traveled to UK, the best facility I really like, even part of the California, I'm connecting with a couple of universities over here also. The Ireland provide one year stay visa. So it, you actually, as a student, when you finish your course, you're going to get one year to apply for the different companies or you're going to talk with the different companies, be part of the internship or you want to do the second internship. So that is a huge benefit because whenever there is a clock and if some, some other country or some other place, you have a three months visa or two months visa in, in other side in Ireland, you have a one, one year stay visa. That's going to give you a lot of confidence, a lot of timeline. So overall, uh, congratulate means all the best for everyone when you are coming to the UCD. It's the best university, best lab, best professor. So I'm really thankful to be part of the UCD.
Victor and Upala, thank you so much for, for giving your time uh, and sharing your experiences. I remember meeting you both in UCD, so it's, it's so lovely to see you again and just to hear how well you've both done and um, how much you enjoy UCD. It really is wonderful to hear, especially when you're a few years out. I always love to see how the students have progressed. Now, not surprisingly, the questions are flooding in because obviously uh, this is a super opportunity for our applicants and attendees today to hear from our wonderful panelists. I might ask our panelists just to turn their cameras back on and I'm gonna start uh, managing some of the questions. So just to, to give you a quick update on who we have with us today, we have Upala and Victor, two of our alumni. We have our internship managers, uh, Vanula and Eileen. We have one of our marketing managers from the college, Laura. We have Lorraine who uh, manages uh, the Indian applications and we have Leona Barry who is our careers uh, and networks consultant. So let me jump into some of the questions we have here. Uh, this is for one of our internship managers. So someone is asking, what is the conversion ratio regarding student internships and how, what percentage of students end up getting these internships? That's a good question. Um, I would say that um, there's calls for optimism. So in terms of the internship uh, program, while it is a competitive process, so the idea is that it mirrors real life insofar as it can in order to give you that, that invaluable experience for after you finish your degree. It is, um, it, we do see the majority of students getting a long internship. And in the case where, um, in, in, it's only a few cases, but uh, if a student doesn't get the long internship, they are, they do a short internship, whether that's external to UCD, so a 10 credit summer external internship, which would be paid. I think somebody asked that question in, in the chat there or an internal to UCD internship in the case that they don't get an external um, summer internship. And that would be with the UCD research group, for example, in a relevant work area. And sometimes those uh, internal UCD summer internships are unpaid. But again, the vast majority of students uh, will get very, with great ease, I'm glad to report, um, will get an external internship with an employer paid for, for six to eight months. So the, while it's not guaranteed, it's certainly very likely. And in terms of conversion to graduate roles, um, it's hard to know. Um, it could be as high as 70%, um, but it just varies. The employers hire differently. Um, and also some students might um, get offered a graduate role and might turn it down. So it's actually kind of difficult enough for us to know the exact number, but um, yeah, a lot of internships would lead on to graduate roles. Just while we're on internships, um, I know you did answer the question that summer internships are, are generally paid, but someone is asking, if you do not get any internship, what could be the reason and will it affect further opportunities? So I guess what they're asking is, this is someone who would like to engage in the internship, they go for uh, you know, their interviews, but they don't get an internship, I suppose, why do they not get them and, and really what's the effect of that? Uh, sorry, uh, it, it, it's, it varies um, really from person to person. It could be that their application needs more work um, and if that's the case, it's quite easy to rectify um, the Career Centre and we work with students to help get their CV and applications to a better standard. Um, it, some might might never have done an interview before, uh, so it might be just simply that they need more interview practice. Um, but the whole process is, is huge learning for students um, and anybody who is struggling, there's resources there and we would work with students to, to help identify what the problems are and um, yeah, work with them to get a, to secure an internship. And just to okay. say that there will be no, there, there won't be anyone who who's left with absolutely nothing. So it's that's why there's a fallback of of the short internship, the summer internship, as a kind of a, a fallback option in case for whatever reason a student doesn't get or isn't doing the long internship. So there's you know there's always something there, some some experience, good experience to be had. I think it's fair to say though, from having looked at the numbers that you both have have provided before, the majority of students who want an internship are are generally successful. Um, I think the next question would really be for Lorraine. Um, Lorraine, has the deadline to accept the offer passed and is a deferral possible if someone is looking to defer an offer? Um, thanks, Katie, and, and thanks for this great session. It's been really wonderful to, to hear from everyone and it's, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity 
for students from India and South Asia to kind of connect directly with the college and, and our alumni as well. Um, in terms of kind of acceptance dates, um, it depends on the program and it depends on when you've applied. Um, you will see your offer, once you log into the system and you look at your offer letter, you will see the deadline for acceptance. And um, what I'd say to any students, if you're having any difficulties or thinking about deferrals or have any kind of queries in general around accepting your offer, please do stay in contact with myself and the team in Delhi. UCD has an office in Gurgaon in Delhi. Um, many of you will have been in contact with maybe Serbia or Supriya um, or some of our team members there, but you can email them directly at india at ucd.ie. Um, we work very closely with, with Katie and her team in the college as well in terms of um, application. So if there is anyone who is having any, um, any, any concerns or just wants to discuss their application, please do reach out, reach out to us and, and uh, contact us directly. And we'd be happy to, to talk to you um, kind of individually around these things as well. Brilliant. So I think, I think the advice there is to reach back out to who you've been dealing with, either Serbi, Supriya, Lorraine, or myself and Laura, or any of the team in our Delhi office. Um, question for Adapala and Victor. We have a student here who's coming into the MNJC in Electronic and Computer Engineering, which is an extremely popular master's. Uh, I suppose having just heard about your professional work experience, they're wondering if being a one-year student, do you think that they'll be at a disadvantage uh, pursuing a one-year course? Um, and there, I suppose you guys might have experience having met other colleagues who are doing a one-year master's previously. Uh, no, I don't see any disadvantage in having a one-year course, no. In fact, yeah. you can get, if you really want a job, you'll get into the job market quicker than the others. Exactly. And the, 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 the difference yeah. between the difference between one year and two years, it's just like for one year, the first six months you will be so there is a total 12, 12 modules. So you be, you basically the the two years master's program, you're going to get a chance of the six months internship in the one year master's or ME program, you're going to get a, a internship for three months. That is the main key difference. Other than that, the course module, the number of credits is almost like a same, pretty same. So uh, as Upala mentioned that, yeah, you're going to be there in the market for the more quicker time. The, the, the selection of the course, the course course structure, everything will be same. So if you have a more interest on the PhD domain, then definitely the two years master's is really good because you're going to have a almost like a eight months long uh, on, on your master thesis, where in when you are part of the one year master's is just like a three months uh, internship or three, three months uh, academic thesis. Thank you very much. I think also the advice uh, we would probably give students as well is they need to also be realistic about what they can, um, what's viable for them financially and in terms of the, the time that they have to spend studying. And I know you're probably asking that question because the electronic and computer engineering is available both in a one year and a two year version. Um, I have a couple of questions I might ask my, my colleague, Laura. Someone is wondering about the job opportunities for students who are wishing to pursue the MSc in environmental policy in Ireland. So you're just on mute there, Laura. Sorry, I should know that at this stage. <laughs> Um, yeah, so for the environmental policy, there's some really um, good employment opportunities. Um, I think in the past, students have been very successful in getting employment from the, the program in environmental policy in envi obviously environmental related fields. Um, and they'd have a range of obviously public, private um, institutions and also NGO organizations. Um, I think past graduates have worked for a number of agencies, both in Ireland and also internationally as well, which is good for students who maybe want to go back to their home countries. Um, and then some private companies, the likes of um, Samsung and uh, Samsung Electronics, uh, Wistex, Citibank, um, EnviroEcon, which is an Irish organization, Irish Water. Um, and then they've had graduates who've gone to work for um, public bodies as well, particularly in Ireland, the likes of the, um, the Department of Public Expenditure, Expenditure and Reform, um, some international bodies as well. And then NGO organizations would make up a bulk of what the graduates end up going to um, and an example of one is Global Action Plan Ireland or environmental positions like environmental consultancy and um, policy officers and um, uh, some graduates going to research and um, climate officers or environmental justice officers as well and then we have others who go on to pursue um, PhDs so there's generally just a lot of opportunities and um, it's quite a broad 
it's not very specific, it's quite a broad degree. So the opportunities for students are indicative of, of the choices available um, within the, the program and the, and the modules available also. Thanks, Laura. Is someone here also asking about the main difference between the MNGSC and the ME? Just to remind you, so the MNGSE is a one-year master's. Where you see ME in our college, that means it is a two-year master's and it does encompass that internship that we spoke about earlier. I have a question now for Upala uh, and Victor. Someone is wondering, did either of you avail of any of the, the societies or extracurricular activities in UCD? Um, and you know, did you, did you find it easy to make friends? Should I go first? Uh, I, I, was, um, I was very excited the day, the first year when I went to the society, we have a fair when the society is actually, society week, I think it's called. And I got really excited and you can join at any number of societies you want with two euros or they have a price set. It's not huge, it's very minimum to join. I joined five. And I'm very embarrassed because I could only very, go Very, very enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I um, but yes, it was great. I did air rifle shooting, um, and I also went two classes for the Irish dancing. But it was too hard for me. I think we you might just be breaking up on a stereo pala. We might. Oh, just, sorry. Um, you're okay. You're back. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I think we may have lost you again. We might just uh, switch over to Victor to see if he joined any extracurricular activities uh, I, or societies I, or clubs. That is the best part of my two year studies in the UCD because uh, when I, I was traveling UCD means when I came Ireland that time I was I think 26 and during that 26 I have a really big fear for water. Uh, okay. I, I never learned to swim. So the first thing I did during the society that, that society uh, career society fair. I joined the swimming club and in two years I learned to swim. So oh, thanks. And yeah. So I, I just overcome my fear. So that is the, the best part. The, the sports facilities is awesome. So I, the, the most of the societies I join, it's a badminton and the, uh, the swimming society. But one thing I really mentioned that they have the movie club and uh, that is the best recreation for me. It means uh, uh, Monday to Friday after having all the classes, talking with the professor, end up with the week and go to the movie club and just watch movie with my friends. So that is the best things I really like. So there is a lot of societies option uh, dividing into the um, uh, sports versus literature. And it's a great fun for everyone. Well, I'm just incredibly impressed that you learned to swim at the age of 26 because uh, swimming is a, a difficult thing to learn if you haven't done it as a child. And I'm so yeah. happy that, that UCD could also provide you with that. It is a wonderful pool, 50 meter swimming pool, Olympic size with gorgeous yes. uh, facilities as well. Um, we have, I'm gonna ask you, Laura, if you don't mind, because we don't have anyone from food engineering here. Someone is asking, uh, they're an upcoming um, student for the food engineering and would you be able to tell them a little bit about the employment opportunities around that if you don't mind? Yeah sure so again it's another great um, industry and sector that we have here in Ireland and um, so the manufacturing sector for food and drink in Ireland is um, one of our most important indigenous industries and um, it has a turnover I think in the realm of 25 I could be wrong maybe 25 to 27 billion euro and um, so it's a it's a it's a huge industry for us and um, we've almost 50,000 um, people who are directly employed by the food and drink um, sector in Ireland with a further about 60,000 employed indirectly than in regions all over the country in this sector. Um, the value of food and drink exports in Ireland is around 12 billion per annum, I think. Um, so as you can tell from that, the, the employment prospects for this particular sector would be um, really, really good and students are getting employed in the food bioprocess, manufacturing and related agencies and industries in Ireland. Um, and then graduates have processed into careers, um, particularly from the, uh, the ME systems and food engineering, um, and then the, the MNGC food engineering um, to companies like um, APV, uh, Coca-Cola, Dairy Gold, uh, Glanbia, Guinness, um, Keypack, and then Kerry Group will be examples of companies based in Ireland that graduates have gone to work for after these particular 
degrees. So yeah, there's great opportunities to be had in that particular sector. Excellent. So the next question, I'm not sure maybe uh, Leona, Laura, or even uh, Victor may want to answer. Um, I know you did the, the energy um, systems, so, but this is the ME and power systems. Someone is just wondering what the job opportunities for a student who's done the two-year uh, power systems is like. Uh, I, what they're saying is they're focused on the fact that the course is mostly focused on core power systems, studies and machines. And how good is Ireland for building a carrier in electrical? Now, I know that's quite a technical question. So I don't know, Victor, would you have a view on that? I know it's not your exact yeah, area, yeah. but you, yeah. So uh, definitely I'll take that question because I was very part of Thank that academic, academic program. Uh, yeah, so the power system is a very core electrical uh, field. Uh, 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 the way you see the, the way I, I, I come to the same thing again, the way the course structure and you're going to see the power system, control systems, power electronics courses for the high power as well as the low power, that, that is the part of the academic program. So you, there is a Terence O'Donnell is a great professor. I was part of, means I, I did my master's thesis with, uh, with him as well. Uh, but the bottom line is that, yes, there is a very good career prospects. Uh, as I told in the high power, I was placed in the ESB. ESB is the, one of the great uh, reputed company in Ireland. They mostly deal with uh, uh, the high power power system stuff. But one thing I want to highlight, whether it's Ireland, UK, they have a strong collaboration on the energy. So whether it's a wind energy, whether it's a solar, whether it's a core electrical. So there is a huge prospects where you can be placed in the companies like uh, Glanbia or other companies like the wind energy, they are doing that. So the energy system has a really good career prospects and all over the EU because uh, the university provide that high level of the uh, academic program for that particular field. S similarly, for the semiconductor industry also, if having a power degree on the power system, if you want to pursue your career on semiconductor on the low voltage side, Maxim Integrated. Maxim Integrated has a great collaboration uh, with UCD. They, they Every year, I think uh, I, have, I have the data for last three, four years, every year, two years, two, two, two or three internship programs we offer to UCD. And uh, like companies like Analog Device, they have the main campus on the Limbrick. It's their headquarter. Intel has a great footprint in the Ireland. So it's a huge prospects. It's a re really a uh, lot of key companies like Intel, Analog Device, Maxim. Other side is the ESB. Uh, uh, there is another company uh, on the high power side also. One of my friend, uh, uh, Arup. Arup is also doing the same thing. So a couple of companies and uh, there is a great career prospect as well. Having the degree on and the in case system. you want to move to Cork, uh, sorry, Victor, sorry to interrupt you. If you want to move to Cork, I work in a power, modular power design company called Advanced Energy. You can yeah. always approach me in LinkedIn if you want an internship or something related to, we actually make modular power supplies, low power from 1,000 to 1,500 watts. Yeah. I tell you, you're a great ambassador for Cork, uh, which is a wonderful part uh, of Ireland. I'm really conscious of time, so I'm going to try and just flick through a couple more questions. Someone asked me about biopharmaceutical engineering and career prospects. I'll just advise them that is a one-year program. Uh, it is a very strong industry in Ireland with the likes of Novartis, Pfizer, Regeneron, Roche, uh, Sanofi, BMS, uh, Allergan, all of those companies um, are big employers of our UCD graduates. Um, and it's an incredibly popular program as well in UCD. Um, someone also just asking, someone is actually joining the ME and Energy Systems, Victor, and they're just wondering, could you advise, how did you select your own pathway uh, that, you, that, you asked, that you mentioned previously, Victor? That is a very good question. So uh, I, I will, honestly speaking, uh, as a student, UCD, provide, UCD is going to provide everything to you. Uh, I, I came from India, uh, not that great background, but to be honest, uh, when I part, part of the UCD, they helped me to build up my resume. They helped me to build up my confidence on regarding the interviews and all. But one thing you as a student, you need to do, you have to find your own interest that which field you want to pursue your future career. And based on that, you have to select your subject. So like when I was in IBM, did my internship, I thought that, okay, the industry is moving on the data science, data engineering field. 
so why not i just have a course and my my current uh, i was a part of the energy system the professor dr david provided me that opportunity that yeah, yeah hey victor you can go ahead and choose that subject so i choose subject from there there is a couple of subject like control system power electronics that is in the part of the academic program so i know that which area i want to build and that's why i select my master thesis as well in that particular area and that's i was fortunate to have the professor uh, provide me that platform the lab actually helped me a lot because that's why i build up my confidence on the hardware side as well and when it comes to the interview session it was very easy for me to crack those interview uh, it's to be frank uh, the way i at a point of time i have a three offer from the three different companies and companies like esb is a huge opportunity for every students and uh, uh, the way they going to introduce the company you going to talk with the person they come to the campus there is a uh, every, every uh, in the lunch time one hour session with the company's representative and they you going to talk you going to ask you going to clarify your questions and that's way it will guide you which direction you want to pursue your career thank you so much victor i'm really conscious of time and that we've loads of questions i have promised to let some of my colleagues go because i know some of them have a three o'clock and also upala and victor uh, have uh, excellent jobs to go to so i'm going to let you both go if anyone uh, laura if you're available to stay on i'm going to stay on and try and answer as many more questions as i can uh, but the rest of my colleagues who are i know a few of you have three o'clock you're you're very welcome to to log off at this point and um, so i would just like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues eileen fanula laura leona lorraine and specifically our two wonderful uh, they were wonderful students and now they're wonderful alumni upala and victor really appreciate your time and the fact that you've shared so much knowledge and your experience with these students um is invaluable i think and i this is the first time we've done this and i think that this is something that we're continue to do it's the first time we've done this online i, sh I should say uh, and we will continue to do this uh, but as i say i'm going to stay online because i would like to answer as many questions uh, for our participants as possible but again thank you very much Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Now, so I'm going to try and have a look through some more of the questions that we have here. Um, let me see. Victor, are you staying on the line? Yeah, I have. It's morning, seven o'clock, so I have another couple of couple of minutes, so no issue. I, I, I was thinking you might need to go back to bed for for some more uh, sleep. So let me uh, scroll through here and see if there's any questions specifically that would be uh, relative to you. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this one. You'd probably have a good idea though, but someone graduating from ME in mechanical engineering, I mean, I suppose with engineering, your experience is that there's so much cross-disciplinary work. And when you go into a company, you could be as likely sitting beside an electronic engineer as a mechanical engineer. Um, I know my experience from speaking with uh, mechanical engineers is that the job opportunities are abundant, they're, they're exemplary in Ireland because mechanical engineers are, if it moves, it's gone through the hands of a mechanical engineer in some, some shape or form. And um, so I don't know, Victor, if you would have a view on that, you may have friends who've done mechanical engineering through UCD or have an understanding. Yeah, yeah, my uh, two good friends, Nitin, and uh, one of my very good friends, Varun. So uh, when I was in UCD, I have a really group of friends. That is the, uh, uh, that is the first thing, but, uh, I have a knowledge on the environmental science, food science, because my friends was doing the same studies and we used to share the time in the library. So the mechanical engineering also have a great platform. Uh, the, the way I told you that you, you need to think about that this way, that in which area Ireland is really strong, to be honest, means according to my prospect uh, on the environmental, on the energy side, on the electronics, these are all interlinked. And I, the, the way Ireland is growing, uh, they are investing a huge amount of money on the renewable energy. When you talked about the renewable energy, we need a people from the electrical background, we need a people from the mechanical background, we need a people from the engineering or in, in different uh, branch of the engineering as well. So companies like ESB, it's a, uh, it's, you can think about that say, just like a government uh, platform as like in India, we have the uh, power grid we have the ntpc in india similarly the plan the similar companies in ireland is ES esb so they they hired in the environmental science engineering they hired mechanical engineering they hired electrical or electronics engineering 
So it's an open platform for all engineering branches. There is a really couple of key companies they're working on the renewable energy and they hired the mechanical engineering as well. So, and uh, apart from that, there is a companies on the shipping side, uh, on the transport side. So, because Ireland is a really great, great uh, uh, field for the shipping and the, uh, uh, that, that field, that area. So that is also provide you the opportunity to work on that kind of companies as well. Thank you so much. Um, a question for Leona. Someone is a little bit concerned. Again, it's obviously someone who is going to be starting the biopharmaceutical engineering with us, which we know is a one-year master's. I think they're just a little bit worried that they're, they, they don't have any experience and will the industry specific experience, is that hugely important or will they be okay in terms of career prospects without that? That's a very good question, Katie, and I'm glad somebody brought it up. And I think it's very important to know that you're all in the same boat, firstly, when you are going for your um, your applications. Um, but in relation to your CV and cover letter, uh, the company is looking for somebody who is the best fit for that particular role. So yes, they are looking for experience, but look at those skills that are on that job description. So you're getting each individual job description, you're looking at the duties, responsibilities, the skills, the requirements, the language, the, ter the terminology on that job description. And you, it's your job to look at your CV and cover letter and try and take out those skills that are on that job description and demonstrate where you have developed those skills and, and um, put them onto your CV and cover letter also. Um, in relation to work experience, it's great if you have work experience, but perhaps maybe after your education and your education piece on your CV detailing your modules, um, perhaps some um, technical skills and perhaps a heading including an academic, a relevant academic project. Something like that could definitely um, help with, um, with, with your CV. Um, but it's demonstrating that you're the best fit for that particular role. So the key is tailoring to each individual job description rather than sending a CV and cover letter to every company. So it's that tailoring piece is very important. Um, and your experience um, in relation to demonstrating those skills and are coming can come from work experience, but they can also come from academics and they can furthermore come from any extracurricular activities as well. Thanks, uh, Leona. And while I have you there, someone just asking about the job opportunities around structural engineering, I suppose, so on the civil side, what are their chances of getting a, a job after gra graduation? You might have an idea about that. Absolutely. Um, so civil structural, School of Civil Structural um, Engineering. So there's opportunities. There have been changes over the last year. Um, it would have been quite quiet um, for a few months last year, but things are starting to pick up again. Um, so a lot of companies are very much perhaps maybe they um, looked at the graduates um, opportunities from last year. And some of those students have started to take opportunities for, for this year. But the but things are changing, things are moving, um, and it's, it's slowly but surely. But there, there I've actually saw a, a role that came in today um, for a civil structural um, graduate um, in kind of the consulting field. So that's, um, there are roles um, available. Yeah, and it, just from my experience of dealing with students, um, I have had a number of students, they often contact you when they're near graduation to say that they have secured jobs, you know, just as they're coming to the end of their education. And particularly, I do notice on the civil and structural, they do seem to do quite well in terms of securing jobs before uh, they, they graduate as well, which is great to see. Um, Laura, I don't know if you'd be able to answer this question. Someone's just wondering about the biomedical engineering and they want to know what the class size would be. Uh, they're concerned that they've only been able to find two more students from the same course on the global Facebook page. Um, I don't know what the average class size for the particular program is off the top of my head. I do apologize, but I do know we get a we get a, a relatively good mix for that particular um, program. So while well, you might be only getting one or two students, particularly from India, but you will be in a class that has um, Irish students, other EU students, and then students from other non-EU countries. So I think you'll find a good mix. So I wouldn't worry if a student is only finding one or two people um, coming from India for the course. Um, once they actually get to, you know, get to meet the rest of their class, they'll find that there's a great breadth of, of, um, of diversity in the class and they'll get to know other people really, really well. So I wouldn't worry too much. I'd agree with you. And I think it's also important for people to note that just because you're a biomedical engineering student, you are going to have crossovers depending on the option modules that you choose. 
So you may you know, be sitting in classes with electronic engineers or mechanical engineers as well. Um, so you will have an opportunity to, to meet uh, loads of colleagues and um, classmates across the college. Uh, Victor, this might be, uh, you mentioned this previously, Victor, about it's referred to, it's not the official name, but it is referred to as the stay back visa um, in Ireland. So if you graduate with a level nine, which is a master's, level nine is a master's, you're entitled to stay in Ireland up to two years, uh, the first year while seeking work, and then uh, the second year as well. And then at that stage, it's, um, and Leona or Victor, you might share your own experience, or Leona, you'd have more familiarity with that. Uh, you can work with your company for sponsorship or Victor, you also then, you worked in Ireland for a number of years and then you moved to the States. Yes. So yeah, uh, the way I mentioned and Leona, uh, make, make me correct if I mentioned something wrong, but the way I know, uh, and uh, as I told you, my friend circle was really big when I was in the UCD. So uh, I saw that one thing is really make me, uh, means the reason I all, always motivate and the reason I always uh, tell other people also to consider the island because when all of us we are planning we are applying for the companies and uh, giving the interview there is always stress like okay how much time I have on my visa that is the every every person we're going to think about that oh I need to crack the interview within that timeline I need to crack the interview on that timeline and uh, my cousin was doing the same master's program in UK and I know that how much stress she was handling during that time because uh, in UK she was having three months uh, stay visa. What the benefit I was having is that one year uh, I, I was fortunate to get the job before graduating but I saw a couple of my friends who had who actually not able to place during the course but during the another three months or two months two months timeline they got a job offer. So that you you, you when you are in the part of the study when you are coming from India to here, you don't want to take that much of stress because your, your key focus to study just to make a new friends, try to understand the university campus and all. So that is the stay visa is really important during this means that it's a study visa. And when I was graduated, uh, you're going to, your company is going to sponsor. And that is also another huge advantage to be part of California. And every year we are talking about the H1B visa lottery. I really say I, 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 I'm, 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 very happy to say that the Ireland, the visa process is much smoother compared to the uh, visa process in US. Because in US, in California, the H-1B is based on completely lottery. If you have a luck, it will be picked. If not, then it's just you need to wait for the next year. But uh, other side in Ireland, your company is going to sponsor your visa for every one year or two years timeline, and you're going to renew. And there is a, uh, after five years, when you pay the tax to the government, there is a green card process also start. So it's a uh, overall uh, uh, bottom line is that the visa process or the working visa process is very smooth in Ireland. Leona, do you have anything to add or is that fairly covered from your yeah, no, experience? Yes, thanks, Katie. Yeah, Victor, no, absolutely. Um, uh, so students who are attending full-time course of one year duration are entitled to seek employment on a casual basis at the third level graduate scheme, which allows the, the non-EU students uh, who've graduated from an Irish um, a, a institution to remain in Ireland for 12 months to seek employment. And then ask, after those 12 months, you're eligible for the green card or work permit scheme. And the permission is granted by the Department of Enterprise, Trade and, and Innovation. But um, UCD Global they, um, have all information in relation to uh, working visas and um, can, can assist students if they have okay. any questions on, on their website there as well. Thank you. Someone just asked me, will this session be made available on the incoming student portal? This session won't. This session will be on our YouTube channel, which we, you can find by searching YouTube UCD and York. I'll just ask Lord to pop it up on the chat there. Um, but there will be some recordings uh, near the time for the incoming student portal. But if your, your questions are not answered during the incoming student portal, please reach out. Uh, to myself and Laura or our colleagues, excuse me, over in uh, the office in Delhi. Um, someone is just, I don't know, Laura, if you'd be happy to take an architecture question. I know most of our students here today are engineers. Someone asked me about the career opportunities relating to the architecture field. Yeah, sure. Um, so for our architecture program, um, it's obviously triple accredited. So it has accreditation from the, uh, the UK, Irish and 
um, the US um, professional bodies. So it means that graduates who are graduating from the MRC program um, can pretty much travel to a lot of different countries, um, to major global centers, to practice architecture, obviously depending on those country specific regulations. Um, but this makes it a really, really good um, program for looking for jobs post degree. Um, and then graduates typically go into ar um, architectural practice um, if they're if they're pursuing the masters, but we do have students then who'll go on to do other ancillary fields around architecture, uh, things like planning, um, heritage site management, landscape architecture is becoming um, a, a bigger thing in Ireland, um, cultural or artistic practice, graphic design, photography. We have a graduate who's a, an actor now as well. So while the majority of students do go into architectural practice and the degree is very good for that because of that triple accreditation, we do have students who go into those um, other creative aspects um, post degree as well. Okay, uh, we also had someone here asking about the biomedical engineering. Um, again, yes, there are great career prospects um, in this. I'm just conscious we're just going to try and get through the last five questions and, or last few questions and let everyone go. But uh, I know Leona would, would work with our students, but I know uh, from speaking with our students, a lot of them will go into the likes of ABBA, BMR, Boston Scientific, Pui. Uh, Shimmer, Resmed, uh, Stryker, they would be the types of companies uh, that our biomedical students would go into. And I know that um, in terms of employment prospects, again, they are exemplary for, for that particular area. If I miss anything there, uh, Leona, please, please uh, jump in. Um, I'm just trying to have a look through here. Do students with a one-year program just get a one-year stay back period or two? I think Leona answered that previously. I think if you have a year to find your job uh, and then that you're expected to be in employment uh, within that first 12 months and then you have, uh, do you have a further 12 months to work there before you have to start another visa process, Leona, at that point? Um, I'm... I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm not really clear on the question, Katie, but um, so it's one year and then again, an opportunity to for sponsorship then for the, yes. the um, I don't know if anyone else knows any other information on that, but um, I know UCD Global can be, um, has information on, on, on um, work visas. Actually, I think there might be something on Global if, if Laura wants to pop it in there, but I think Laura was about to jump in there. Yeah, I was just about to jump in. I think it's once it's a level nine, so that's regardless if it's both the one year and the two year master's programs we offer a level nine, that means the students get the two year stay back visa. After the first year, yes, they have to reapply, but they do get the two year regardless if it's a one year or a two year master's once it's the level nine. Um, and a quick question here for Fanula. Someone's enrolled in the one year MNJC in electronic and computer. Is there provision to do an internship instead of their final thesis project too? As far as I'm aware, no, um, there is no credit bearing internship as part of the one year master's program. So it's uh, the two year ME programs as opposed to MNSC that incorporate a credit bearing internship. Yeah, that's my understanding also. And Leona, someone wondering uh, what are the employment opportunities or types of companies they could work with for the electronic and computer science program? So um, either Laura or Leona can, can jump in on that one, please. Um, Laura, would you have information on that? Just on mute. The course, what was it, sorry? Electronic and computer engineering. Yeah, so the ICT sector in um, Ireland would be very, very strong. We've had students then who would progress into um, many of the companies that would have a base in Dublin to do with electronic computer. Um, it is a very strong area um, in uh in Ireland and, and most graduates I think are finding jobs even before they've they've left, particularly if they've done the, um, the two year program uh, because of that internship opportunity. Um, but um, I think in Ireland across the ICT sector, there's about 5,000 job opportunities coming up on stream um, all the time. And um, Ireland being a digital hub as well um, as a base in Europe is really, really important for graduates in this particular area. And then um, employers um, in the past for graduates from this course have been the likes of Accenture, Analog Devices, um, Intel, Microsoft, so you see big, big names there, um, uh, Synopsys. Um, and yeah, we've had a lot of graduates go overseas with this particular course as well, because the skills that they learn are quite transferable um, across industries and across countries. Okay. Yeah. We sit Sorry, go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, I will just add with Laura, that is completely true. The, uh, uh, the computer science and the electronics have a really great prospects. When I was in uh, IBM research lab, it's this hub of 6,000 engineers. So I was in the, the, the campus was the huge Ireland, uh, the IBM, Accenture, Intel, the Google, one of my friend is working on the Google also. Google have a really good footprint in Dublin. So a uh, couple of the key companies are, are over there. Excellent. Um, someone is also asking about the engineering management course, masters, that's a one year masters. That's extremely popular, particularly with our Indian uh, student body. Uh, we have many students have come through that and gone on for very successful careers. Someone is asking um, about the projects which are done in the third semester. Victor, this is something you mentioned. Actually, I'm not sure if it was yourself or Rupala. Um, obviously, when you're doing the one year, the focus, really the core work of your uh, minor thesis is done over the summer trimester. I know that you would probably get your project title earlier on. But someone's just one. I mean, what is what's the type of projects you're doing? I mean, I know you wouldn't know for engineering management, but my understanding is that the list is made available. You apply for the subject area you want, or you can actually come up with your own subject area and have it approved to ensure that it fits the learning outcomes of your master's. Is that a fair synopsis, Victor? Yeah, that's true. So uh, uh, the way you mentioned, the the based on the number of students, the professors sit together and they just uh, build up a list. And that list is actually come up with the projects they are driving. So each professor have a fund from the EU government, or they have a they have an ongoing projects going on that. And based on that projects, they offer number of uh, students they want to take. So it's not like that, say academic project where just you need to do some study. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, I I remember that list till now, and that all thirty projects is part of some of the sponsored project by either it's sponsored by any semiconductor or industry or it's sponsored by the eu government uh the uh, as i told you that uh, i was really know what i want to do i know what where is my interest so i actually contact my professor beforehand when i was doing my internships so dr terence o'donnell he was doing the project uh where, where, where it's a transmission line between dublin or ireland to uk so that project was ongoing. So I was having really interest. So I contact with the professor. So I can tell you the two things. There will be list available. Or if you have, uh, if you already talked with the professor, you know that some of the opportunities are there. You can directly approach to the professor. The professors are always welcome students. That's excellent to hear. I'm just going to do one more question because no matter how long I stay on, I seem to have at least 10 questions coming in. Uh, so just to, to you, Laura. Um, Someone wondering about shedding a little bit of light on the sustainable energy and green tech. And um, they didn't say light in terms of content, but I'm imagining it's more careers, seeing as this is a careers event. Yeah, so our sustainable energy and green technologies program sits within our School of Biosystems and Food Engineering. Um, so you'll see a lot of people, you know, a lot of students going to, into those kind of types of companies. Uh, but essentially, they're, you know, graduates are going into planning, deploying, um, utilizing green technology systems um, for environmental impact migration and things like that. Um, typical opportunities, I think, in the past have been waste energy facilities, biogas plants, um, ethanol production facilities, district heating operations, um, renewable energies is obviously a, a key um, area for this, and there'll be job opportunities in that field in Ireland. Um, students are working in laboratories, they're working in private industry. Um, uh, and things like that. And then we've got students who go into to research because the biosystems and food in, uh, school will be heavily research influenced as well. So there's plenty of opportunity for students who want to pursue that kind of avenue as well. Um, but yeah, it's quite a broad degree, um, but there would be good opportunities available for students um, post degree as, as a career for sustainable energy and green technologies. Thanks, Laura. I'm sorry we haven't got to answer everyone's questions. I might just ask Laura to pop in a link uh, into the chat, if you wouldn't mind about our upcoming talk graduate event, Laura. Yeah, uh, so I will do. For, Laura and I are running a talk graduate event where you'll get to meet some academics uh, that are um, running your courses and some alumni uh, and some current students. That's taking place at the end of May. So that might be a good opportunity for you to register to get any of the questions you didn't have answered today. I am sorry we didn't get through all of them, but we have ran about an extra 30, 35 minutes over. Um, and I'm so delighted we had so many wonderful questions uh, and that we were in a position to answer them. And specifically, I would like to thank uh, Victor, Laura, Leona, 
and uh, Fanula for their time today. Um, very much appreciated, and I know the students do. And we look forward to very much welcoming you all to UC in hopefully the not too distant future. So thank you all. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.